and we're going to see two different contrasting styles. Um, the youngster is going to drive the ball a lot, and he's going to look to close on the ball, where Frank is more of a defensive player. He doesn't possess a ton of power, but he's very good at... He's just very good at like grinding out his opponent. He's like he wants to break them down. He's gonna play a lot of defense, a lot of resets. Um, he he moves extremely well on the court, and um, he's going to. Ah, that was a little confusion because Williams never done rally scoring. Right, this rally mm -hmm. scoring thing is gonna mess up a lot of people their first time for sure. And luckily, we've got a great ref in Jack Feinberg, and Jack is gonna help keep their players uh, straight. But. Clearly, William is confused early on in this. And, and we saw this actually in the women's yep. singles, too. The first time Lucy and Irina both played, they had questions. Like, a lot of questions, yep. actually. Like, Matt, like, you're a teacher, right? Yeah. Are, well, are you a math teacher? I'm a math teacher, yeah. Ah. So it's like, it's like like you teaching trigonometry to somebody for the first time. Yeah, it's like a foreign language. Exactly. So, I mean, good on William to try to get some understanding early so that he's not thinking about it the rest of the match. Yeah, that we can just go into, you know, autopilot. Right, exactly. Not really think about... Wait, what's, where am I supposed to line up? Oh, right. wow. So he apologized about that, but really that's a sorry, not sorry, because they're yeah. competing for money, and he's super happy that ball rolled over. Yeah, it's like, I'm sorry that that happened to you, but I'm not sorry that I got the point. <laughs> I'm glad it happened to me, yeah. yeah. Wow, look at that by Frank. That's intense. A lot of cat and mouse going on here. Oh, oh my god. What an angle. What? That's incredible. Frank is like that's it's like he meant to do that on purpose, Matt. I think he did. That was <laughs> yeah. You, most people don't even think of angles like that. I could never have put a ball that way in an angle. But but one thing I'm seeing early on already is that both of them are very quick on the court, like like two cats on a hot tin roof. Right, exactly. <laughs> I like yeah, that. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a brutal match for both these guys, I think. Yeah, but, I, but the thing is, the rally scoring is going to make it a little quicker. Th right, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm just glad I'm in the shade talking and not having to run around out there. For sure. D did you ever play singles in your heyday? Did, like uh, I've played a little bit, but it's not it's not my favorite. It's, it's, it's overrated, isn't it? It is quite <laughs> overrated, yeah. I don't love the whole cat and mouse thing. It's <laughs> Yeah, it's just a lot of running, a lot of, a lot of grinding for not a lot of reward. I love it. There's too many good players out there. Yeah, Frank seems to love every bit of the grinding uh, part yeah. of this. He, he actually subjects himself to really harsh punishment when he trains. Like, he trains, like, three times a day for, like, long periods of time, like, just dragging himself to the deep end so that when he's actually playing in these matches, he's perfectly fine going in the deep end with people. Yeah, I mean, that's what it takes to, that's what it takes to win out here. So training with Tyson McGuffin uh, back where I'm from, yeah, that guy's, those guys just have a different mentality about what they want out of this game. And, uh, sure. yeah, it helps him be successful. Yeah, Tyson's another great example of somebody who just drags himself into the deep end on a daily basis so that when he's in the biggest matches, he's, he's not uncomfortable. Right. He's not out of his element. Yeah, it's just another day in the office. Yeah, and Ben John's the same way. Ben, ben looks like he's barely trying on the yeah. court, and yet he just destroys everybody, it seems like. So yeah. that's another special talent in and of itself. But do you see right there what I'm talking about with Frank? It's like he's not going to overpower you. No. He's totally content. I mean, he trusts his training. He's totally content to just run around and make points just last longer and longer and longer and just believes that he's going to outlast you. And he usually does, quite yeah. honestly. <laughs> and for good reason, exactly. The people that are able to beat Frank Anthony are the ones like a Ben Johns or a Tyson that are able to just basically jump into the deep end with them and then honestly grind out those games with them and come out on top at the right. end. Right. I mean, William's out here hitting some really good shots, but it doesn't seem to matter. There's a good driver. There, right there we go. That'll work. You see a little fist bump by uh -huh. us? Like yeah, you got to get fired up. For sure. Yeah, these rally scoring games, that's the big difference is they go quickly. So you you got to take you got to take advantage of whatever momentum you can get. He's starting to drive the ball like he likes to do, and that's good. But Frank's ready for that. Frank knows that's coming. Boy, William is not missing by a whole lot. Yeah, there. that was close. Boy, this is a great game here in game one early. That's just too oh, good. Great hands by Frank there. He just has this ability to kind of anticipate really well where the ball is yeah. going to be hit. Well, that's huge in singles. 
uh, there's just enough court to cover that if if you don't have an idea of where it's coming coming to you just can't cover it all me personally because i never played tennis in any capacity i um i look very very silly playing because <laughs> i'll guess one way and then they go the other way and i'm like how did they know but yeah they just do they just know well you watch some of these guys play and the court looks pretty small on the on your your phone or your computer or your tv screen and uh, it looks like it's pretty easy to cover, and you go out and do it, and you feel like you're on a, an extra large version of a court. Yeah, you realize very quickly that <laughs> yeah. the, the 20 feet wide and the 40 feet, 44 feet long is not uh, what it's cracked up to be. It's a lot bigger. No, it's huge. When you're playing singles. Yeah, it feels like an eternity. So, so let's see what happened there. I, I missed. Maybe he served. Oh, oh, the ref. That was a referee error. Okay. okay. Error. That's a. Uh, uncharacteristic of our boy Jack there. He's usually on top of it. I imagine that the rally scoring is just as confusing for the referees to figure out as well. You would guess right. Like that the, the, I'm I'm very impressed that the refs have messed up as little as they have already. I agree because yep. it's a very difficult thing to do initially. You were you weren't actually able to attend the Pickleball Global Challenge Cup back in April before the US Open. Right. right? But they did the rally scoring. Yeah. Um, well, they had the time limit. The time and limit. And Not the that. rally scoring, but the time limit. But I've done an event where they did the rally scoring. And I got to tell you, we did it in doubles. It's fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see how it, how it goes these next couple of days because I can't say that I've ever played with rally scoring. So. Oh, well, I do want to clarify. They were originally going to do the whole event, uh, Matt, in rally scoring. However, they got a little pushback from some of the you know the pros about doing right. it in all the events so they actually just isolated it to just the pro singles for this oh event. so i don't get to experience this well, you that's don't good to know. officially but they will the next time probably okay maybe go that next step but um but yeah so i did want to clarify that because yeah, i was no, confused that, a little clearly bit i too. came prepared so <laughs> <laughs> i love it well frank I anthony able to take that one 12 10 against william sobeck and uh, i gotta say I thought it was going to go down a little bit differently than it did. What about you, Scott? Yeah, I agree. I think 12-10 is not really what I uh, thought would happen. Actually, uh, I thought William held his own extremely well in that first game. Yeah, I mean, you watch the way that Frank was playing, and we mentioned it a couple of times. He just seemed to be getting everything back and just moving William around the court and kind of seemed like he could do whatever he wanted. And for William to keep it that close is really impressive. So we'll see if he can carry that momentum or if Frank's going to be able to pick it up a notch here. Well, and I do want to point out that with the rally scoring, this this game goes a lot faster in singles. So, where I I believe if we didn't have the rally scoring here, this would be like a two hour ordeal. Right. I mean, the score right now would be like four two or something. Correct. It'd be like four two, and we'd still be going through game one. But yeah. But these two type of guys, I mean, Williams like fifteen or sixteen years old, so he's obviously in great shape, not going to get tired. Frank loves to like make himself basically you know grind out matches. So. Um, I believe we would see a lot different scenario without the rally scoring. Yeah, I agree with that as well. I mean, what I'd love to be able to do is go back and analyze each one of these matches and see if there would have been a different outcome right. at the end of it or enough of a different outcome to where we really thought it would have been a different winner. And I, I, maybe a couple is my prediction, but I think overall the rally scoring does reflect who would have won in regular scoring as well. Right, you just get that to that result a little bit quicker. Yep. That's a great ball by William. Frank even Frank gave him uh, props for that one. He's like, great ball there. <laughs> and, and quite honestly, like, William's been hitting two-handed drives down the line trying to pass Frank, but Frank does such a good job of covering sideline to sideline that William's missed a couple drives um, wide and be, because I think Frank really puts a lot of pressure on you to hit a perfect shot, and that's what he does best. Frank's not super tall. I mean, Frank, Frank's five... On a good day, 5'7", five, seven, five, maybe? 5'7", seven, yeah. yeah. So, so he has to make up for some of that with just his tenacity and ability to cover the court really well. Right, which is so does. impressive for somebody that doesn't have super long arms to be able to cover this much court. For sure. he's like, I call him like like, like he he bounces around like Tigger. Yeah. Know, like Tigger yeah. on that yeah, like exactly. cartoon. He's just got that spring in his step. Yeah. And, and um, I'm telling you, I've never seen a guy, honestly, in our sport that like loves to just like like – get in there and just like grind out these matches the way he does he reminds me of like an mma fighter that just oh. he's not gonna punch you out and like knock you out but he's gonna drag you into the deep end for three or five rounds right just wear you down and just make you just like hate yourself for yeah playing him. <laughs> see what exactly see what you're made of 
We got a five one lead. Right, and right now Williams Williams, yeah. Williams showing that he's made of a lot. He's He's really coming out in the second game and uh, showing what he's what he's got. Well, if if you watch a lot of Williams' double strategy when he plays with his father Rosti, I mean, you'll see that they they love being at the baseline and mm -hmm. driving that ball. That's yeah, what they exactly. do, and it it wins for them. I know a lot of a lot of people would instruct you not to take that approach, but it works for them, and they're able to do a lot with that. And now I know that they're starting to work on their slow game a little bit, but I think that because of that, that skill set relates more to success in singles right. than potentially working on your short game a little bit. And I think we're seeing William doing a great job here. Sure, sure. And Matt, I want you to talk about how you've seen the game change because you've been around the game for quite a while. And um, talk about how the game's kind of evolved and now you're seeing like teams like the Waters and, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Yeah, when I first got into the sport, I mean, watching videos of, of the most recent like national tournaments and stuff, they were just long points like 30, 40 ball rallies, just people just pushing the ball around and just daring you to try to be aggressive. And now you've just got this huge infusion of like ex-tennis players and just people that have the ability to be a lot more aggressive and really speed the ball up. Um, and at the same time, people's hands are getting really good and the defense is, is kind of matching it. So you get these really exciting points where people are, aren't afraid to, to swing at the ball and, and it's not just kind of pushing the ball around and, and just waiting to for someone else to make a mistake. They're, they're really taking it to their opponents. So it's it. an exciting it's an exciting uh, time to be playing. For sure. Boy, that oh, that's is a such great, a... That's a great shot. Man, you know, the ability to come up on the run like that and just whip that ball over the net past the forehand of William Sobek is really impressive. It just stayed so low. That's a tough thing to even get a paddle on. And if you pay close attention, Frank's got his signature paddle. Um, the who def f a d fad i love that I, it's it's hard to brand yourself in anything right. especially a sport like this and for frank to to brand himself so well like that i think is really cool yeah it's really fun and i feel like the sport's going to move in that direction a little bit more in the next couple of years you just get these bigger personalities that fans can really get behind for sure did you see that matt by chance um the ball got clipped up off Frank's paddle straight up in the air, and William attacked it, and Frank just held his ground and actually fired back on the ball on an overhead. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, I mean, that's just never giving up. Yeah, and actually just the ability to, like, see that ball coming that fast at you and, yeah, and, and then just, play it. Just put yeah. a paddle on it. That's incredible. That's why they're pros, man. I mean, the, the, like, again, like, we talk about that a lot, but to be a professional in any, in any realm means that you've, you've put the time, the work, the energy in, but also you have what is like the X factor almost, right? Right. You've got a little something extra. See how he, like, Frank's perfectly content with just, like, continuing that point. Oh, look at this. This is unreal. He bought himself some time. Oh my goodness, oh, what a great man. point. Look at wow. William just lay on the ground. What oh. hustle. He just sprawled on the ground. Now, this is going to be key right here because William's actually winning right now, correct? Barely, uh, but he's yep. winning barely. Mm -hmm. This next point is going to be crucial to see how he responds after that, that right. battle right there. Okay, that's that's, that's one way to do well, it. He and responded very well. He's great. And with rally scoring too, that's, that's tied. A point. That's a free so it's point. Eight, that's a free now it's 8-6, yeah. Man, I that mean, is so hard to, like, remember. Yeah. Right, it makes that serve just so much more important. I wonder, uh, it'll be interesting watching the rest of these matches just to see if people maybe go for a little bit less on their reserves, maybe a little less on their returns just because that's such an important part to just not give away free, free points. Matt, I'm glad you brought that up because earlier when we watched Lindsey Newman play on this court, what, what, was the, uh, what was the prediction? I made a bold prediction, Matt, and l listen to this bold prediction I the made. The prediction that Scott Golden made was that she would not miss one serve or return. It started off with just game one and then ended up with both games. And did it come true, Scott? It absolutely came true. <laughs> it and, absolutely and, did. And she, she, honestly, Matt, she didn't even come close to missing a serve. Not even yeah. close. Like, not even close. Yeah. She was so comfortable. Well, and that's the interesting thing. I mean, coming out in singles, having a, a great, deep, powerful serve and a, and a return that really pushes them back off the line is so important to kind of gaining that control of the court. Um, so it really is an asset. But if you miss it, then that's that's just throwing away points. And in, in a rally scoring match, I mean, that 11 points and they're done. So absolutely, there's that that much more important. You know, and I, 
I was talking to Tyson. He got here a day or two ago and was training with Zane Navratil on the courts. And I, I, I talked to Tyson about the rally scoring and his op opinion on it. And, you know, he just said, like, you know, I'm not sure yet how it's going to fare for my style because he likes to do the cat and mouse stuff. Right. And so we're going to see. I can't wait to see Tyson play and see how it fares for him because he also has a monster serve. Right. But, yeah, he's somebody that's not afraid to – to battle it out for the first little while and then just outlast you and kind of cruise at the end of a match. But in this rally scoring, it's going to change people, the dynamic. Right, people can hang with him for a little bit longer. Yep. So he's going to maybe have to come out and do a little bit more. That's so what he says. He's just going to have to hit the crap out of the ball. But, you know, we'll see. But trust me, I've played with that guy plenty of times. If he wants to just hit the crap out of the ball, he's going to be just fine. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think he shows us that as yeah, much. Yeah, no, he's very capable of painting every line. It's really frustrating. I love it. All right, so we, we're back to this action, man. We got a fantastic competition here with these two. Will, William's not afraid to just pull the trigger and just unload on that ball. No, he does not seem like he wants to come into the net at all when, when Frank's up there. He's content to just blast forehands, blast backhands. Ripping at it. 10-8, or 8-10, I should say there. This is crucial for... That is a weird it. dynamic to be serving and be able to lose the game on your serve. 100%. And I think that's more more than anything, mentally, it kind of messes with the players oh, initially. Because it's like you're thinking about, like, mm -hmm. oh, I just won a point or I just lost a point. Right. Normally you maybe have a little bit of breathing room. You can maybe go for a little bit more on, on your third shot drive, try to hit a passing shot. But this way you got to go a little bit more conservative. So you said earlier when I first asked you that you have played a few times at singles. Does the rally scoring incentivize you to maybe want to jump out there and start playing again? I could probably get get intrigued by playing singles in the rally scoring, yeah. Why don't you and I, after this wraps up, why don't you and I just play a couple points in rally scoring? We'll see. We'll, uh, well, yeah, let's, let's see it. <laughs> I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, if the forehand yeah. can, for can get hot, I can be pretty good at <laughs> Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So. I'm actually a little nervous I threw that <laughs> out there. All right, so so we're coming out of this uh, game three, man. Yeah, game two, and and Williams seems just as confident as he did in game one. Yeah, Jack. aside from a few like fist pumps here and there, I mean, he's somebody like it. Kind of reminds you of Ben Johns, just super even keeled. Like he doesn't get very high or very low for sure. He's got great training, formal training with his dad yeah. at, about competition. And right, that's so impressive for somebody his age. Right, like he doesn't give you the vibe that he's like 15. No, not at all. And that's a very, to me, that's just so rare to right, see Right, a very mature athlete for, for sure. Yeah, great great guy to watch play. All right, let's see who makes the adjustments here in game three to come out on top. Ah, Frank, Frank actually did a no that look. That was a great no did, look. Okay. Oh, he, he, faked that, he faked that pretty hard. Okay, I thought I was the only one that noticed that, but no, you guys saw nope, it too. We saw it. He, he just schooled that ball right there. Ah, the wind picked up a little bit on him. Not to say that that was the reason he missed that, but I think the wind did kind of uh, start blowing a little bit and pick up there. We've been pretty fortunate the rest of the afternoon. I agree. The weather seems to have uh, turned for the better for when it comes to conditions that are ideal for pickleball, that's for sure. Wow, great hands by Frank there. Again, it's like he anticipates Yeah, he so seemed well. to have his paddle there before William even was swinging. That has to be frustrating for the opponent. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be infuriating. <laughs> yeah. He's like, thank you very much. I'll take that. Yep. yep. Please put it right here. But again, it's if you just watch him point after point, like he's not going to overpower you. He simply works his game to basically impose his will on you by dragging you into that deep end. And just like he's he's perfectly content where like Matt Goble would get a ball up and would like blister it to put it away. Mm -hmm. He'll actually toy with it like, like, like a lion toying with a gazelle almost yeah like, like just yeah he's just pushing the ball around him yeah, yeah. You, he gets those high balls and instead of just trying to crack it and, and hit a big winner he's just pushing it and if william wants to get to it he's like great wear yourself out i'll just sit right here in the middle of the court all day real comfortable yeah and and i think that's really fun as viewers to see somebody like frank anthony do what he does because it's definitely the most unique style that i think i've ever seen in singles the other yeah. two that i really love and this is no this is no crazy you know epiphany here but like watching ben johns and, Ka uh, and tyson mcguffin play they do this like cat and mouse back and forth that's really fun to watch yeah and if you try to if you try it at home it is not as easy as they make it look heck no <laughs> i've actually tried it and i'm like was I, it were you successful at all i like i think i hit one over and i tried the second one and it went into the net i was like wow this is really <laughs> this difficult is not good. i'm not very good at this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it happens to me all the time as well <laughs>
Oh, that's good manipulation. It looked like William thought he was going to go this way with it. Yeah, he definitely guessed cross court there. And he did not. Okay, what's going on here? What are we doing? Uh, side switch because this is game three. Oh, it's already 6-0. It's already 6-0, yeah. So, guys, talk to me. What do you think What do you think Frank Anthony changed here coming into this game three? Because obviously the first two, uh, he, he didn't come out this strong. It seems like he's made an adjustment. I, I really think that he's just kind of staying steady and playing his game. And, I mean, if you if you notice, William was over there, hands on his knees. I think that he, that the, the match is getting to him a little bit, uh, and he's just not quite as sharp as he was in the first two games. Yeah, because even though Frank moves around a lot on the court, it's more like quick, agile movements right. where um, William is just like blunt force trauma. Like, he's just coming at you hard. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that is very unfortunate. But, yeah, I mean, what we've been talking about, Frank's style of play is designed for this third game. Right, he's been not moving that much, and he's been content to just run William around the court left and right. And William's really, really quick and can do it, which means that he's gotten to a few balls that maybe he shouldn't have been able to get to. But now it's, he's paying the price, and he's just, I mean, that's a lot of court he's had to cover this whole match. For sure, and I think that's a great way to, to describe what Frank's doing right now. Yeah, a lot of people get out here in singles and kind of go for broke. They try to aim for lines. They try to hit these big, big winners, uh, try to get points over with as quick as possible. And, and Frank is kind of doing the opposite, and he's kind of giving himself a big margin for error uh, and just moving the ball around the court in a really uh, intentional and smart way, and it's working out for him pretty well. Yeah, and I, I do want to – I have a funny story about Frank and learning about wh where he started in the in the sport years ago, but he's been playing for quite a while, actually. And um, the first – if I'm not misquoting this story, he told me that for the first two years of pickleball, he didn't know that there was doubles. He actually only knew that there was singles. Wow. He thought that there, he practiced and trained and played with a guy up north for like two years and played tournaments singles and never played any doubles. And so it was like – a two-year process before he realized that, hey, I can actually play with a partner. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Well, and that's the thing. Like, you see him at all these singles tournaments, and he does really, really well. And I don't see his name in as many of the, the doubles draws. And you play against him, and I, I haven't played against him in, a, in tournaments too much, but, man, in rec play, his shots are just so phenomenal. He's just got great top spin from the forehand or the backhand. For sure. Uh, yeah, he would be a great doubles player as well. All right, guys, we are live here at the Pickleplex, and I've got my boy Frank Anthony Davis. Congratulations on your big win right there against William Sobeck. Talk to us real quick about the mindset going into this pro singles. For the first time ever, you're playing Riley scoring. How did that play into that match? So, yeah, it's good to see you, Scott. I'm happy to be here. Uh, these courts are awesome, and the event's awesome so far. Um, I actually just played William like a week and a half ago, so I was pretty familiar with his game. I know he's tough, the two-handed backhand, and he's a more aggressive player. And that's the one thing that hurts my game with rally scoring is I'm a grinder. I like to stay on the court and really use athleticism. And I think, you know, the rally scoring kind of takes a little bit of the athleticism out of the game because people who are aggressive, they can just pass and win, and it makes it quick. I like to make the matches long and more athletic. So that's kind of, for me, I'm not in a huge favor of it. But uh, it's fun as I start, try something different occasionally. Yeah, and I think... You just explained that really well. It's like it's because your your style of play, it's actually more beneficial for you to play regular scoring so that you can grind people down and kind of wear them out, drag them into the deep end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when you can when you're losing points on third shots, you know you can't really actually grind the match out, and make it longer. It makes it hard for me. Awesome, awesome. Congratulations on your win, and we'll see you on the next round, man. That was that was fun to watch, buddy. All right, man.